Well, hello everybody. Um, welcome to another in our series of video chats aimed at the Half Earth Project Educator Ambassadors. Um, as, you, as you know from previous ones that um, one of the th nice things we do is occasionally get some authors um, to join us. Um, there's some really great books out there on the topic of conservation, ecology, understanding, saving biodiversity. And so today I'm super pleased to have Ben Goldfarb uh, joining me. Hi, Ben. How are you doing? Hey, Dennis. How are you? Good. And Ben, uh, ben lives in uh, Spokane, Washington, so it's uh, morning time for him. And uh, this is the book that we're going to talk about um, in, in part. We're going to ho hopefully get to know Ben a little bit. Um, and the book's called Eager. The Surprising Secret Life of Beavers and Why They Matter. Um, and this book, I think, has done really well for you, Ben. It's gotten a lot of well-deserved recognition. Um, that, of course, matters. What really matters is I actually read it, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I grew up in, in New York. Uh, I'm really fortunate to have um, parents who always fostered time outside. They took me hiking and camping. I, I loved to fish from a, a very a very young age. So, so New York State yeah. or New York City? Um, a, a suburb of, of, yeah. uh, of New York City, yeah, so the, the yeah. Hudson Valley. Uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah, you know, I just always uh, always loved to be outside, cared deeply about, uh, about nature and, and wildlife in, in particular, uh, and always loved to love to write as well. And, uh, you know, it's really fortunate that I found myself in a situation where I could kind of combine those two, um, those two passions. So, you know, I, I went to, uh, to graduate school, I have a, a master's in environmental management from the, uh, the Yale School of Forestry. Uh, and wow. I, I went there, you know, sort of thinking that I was gonna go, you know, work for a, a, a foundation like yours, um, or, you know, or the Nature Conservancy or the World Wildlife Fund, one of the big, NGOs. Uh, and then when I was in, in graduate school, I just found myself sort of remembering that I love to write and, and uh, you know, started writing for various campus publications uh, wow. and realized that, you know, that environmental journalism was, you know, the best way that I could combine my passions and my, my skills um, to, to help the planet, basically. Yeah. So after, uh, yeah, so I ended up uh, working for a magazine called High Country News out in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Those guys for a couple of years. Uh, started, uh, you know, freelancing for other publications, and, and that eventually led me to uh, to this book. Oh, that's terrific! So, w was getting landing a writing uh, gig with High Country News was that kind of a, a breakthrough for you for your career? Yeah, I think that was yeah. that was really formative. You know, I mean, at that at that point, I was you know I was still in in, in my in my mid twenties, and I really had uh, basically no journalism experience. You know, I, I again I knew that I loved to write. Um, but I didn't really know what it what it uh, what it meant to be a professional writer at that right, point, you know, and uh, spending yeah. time in the High Country News office and then going out to be a sort of a field correspondent for them was really formative. I got to you know spend time with professional journalists and and under understand what it truly means to make a living uh, writing about the planet. My master's program was, was, I took a lot of ecology classes, um, so, you know, I consider myself, I mean, certainly I'm not, I'm, I'm not, absolutely not a, not a scientist, uh, you know, I know uh, Ed Wilson would, uh, you know, would, would frown upon me if we tried to talk about evolution. Um, <laughs> well, he's probably a pretty, a pretty forgiving guy. He, um, yes, and he'd be very, one of Ed's key things is follow your, your passion for sure, so I think, no, I think Ed would love to hear your story. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, anyway, so I'm, I'm you know, certainly not a scientist, but, you know, I do, yeah. I do have a, a background in, in the sciences, especially ecology, um, you know, which is certainly very, very valuable when you write about wildlife conservation and, and, uh, and conservation biology. And, uh, you know, in graduate school, I also took, you know, I took um, various hydrology classes, you know, stream restoration classes, uh, a lot of, I had a lot of sort of hydrological education um, as well, that, that was really valuable when you write about, you know, a creature like the beaver that, uh, that changes aquatic ecosystems so, so profoundly. So there's, there's no question that my, yeah, my grad education was hugely helpful uh, yeah. in, in being a journalist and, and also writing this book. Yeah, help you ask the right question, help frame your thinking on things, help probably help you communicate with the scientists you need to interview when you interview. Absolutely, them. yeah, and you know, it just helps me sort of interpret their papers, right? I mean, right. Uh, you know, there, there are, you know, hundreds of citations in the, in the book and, and, um, and, you know, certainly being reasonably well-versed in, in these, these fields, you know, helps me make sense of the, the scientific literature that I read. Yep. 
Well, I really like that about the book. There's a lot of depth. I like this. I like your story because um, it does a really good job of balancing. There's so many interesting characters, meaning the people in it. But the beavers themselves are, of course, amazing and important. And I, so I really appreciate that combining the human stories with the ecology uh, and the nature aspect of that. Um, yeah, good. I mean, that, I mean, that was, you know, that was one of the things that, that was so striking for me uh, when I you know, embarked on this project was just how many people out there were just insanely passionate about yeah. beavers, you know, and I, and I think that that's, you know, certainly there are other species that inspire that kind of emotion, you know, wolves and bears, but there aren't, there aren't that many, um, right. you know, that, uh, that, that have this incredible coalition of people who are so deeply devoted to to their restoration so yeah. I, I think that's one of the really amazing things about about beavers is their ability to attract all of these different characters from all of these different fields all working on a single rodent i think that's really cool and because beavers are chewing they're, they're chewing down trees we all love trees it it looks destructive uh, they create they disrupt the um our own engineering infrastructure in so many ways. So I'm assuming that's at the heart of this long controversy over, over beavers. So maybe you could talk a little bit about where do you think things are at? Is there general recognition that on balance, we need to, not only do we need to live with the beavers, but that they're actually beneficial to us in so many ways. Um, um, yeah, do you think that that's an, a, a continuing to evolve in a positive way, that thinking? I, I do definitely yeah it's it's uh, you know it's interesting to think about sort of the history of, of of beavers you know I mean of course what happened was as early as the 1600s you know these animals were being wiped out by the the fur trade right you know there were yeah. white uh, trappers and traders from you know from Europe sort of moving westward across the continent you know turning beavers into to pelts basically right this yep. is a, a pelt I bought off a trapper a couple a couple of years ago um, so you know what I mean what what happens when you you know when you kill hundreds of millions of, of beavers. Well, you, you know, you destroy hundreds of millions of acres of, of beaver ponds and wetlands, right? These, you know, amazing sort of watery habitats that they create. So, you know, when we wiped out beavers, we also changed the, the landscape uh, in ways that we, we never fully recognized, right? The trappers kind of spread west across the continent, killed all the beavers, you know, and, and it wasn't really, you know, for a few more decades until the, you know, the, the um, farmers and colonists who sort of settled those same areas. Uh, so, you know, by the, by the time early naturalists and ecologists were, you know, describing North American landscapes, you know, beavers had basically been wiped out and we, we sort of lost touch with what these ecosystems are supposed to look like. Uh, right. You know, there, I mean, there are places that today are, are desert uh, that would have historically been, you know, lush, lush marshland, uh, mm -hmm. thanks in, in large part to, to beavers. So I think that to, to bring beavers back and to understand how important they are, we have to begin to recognize the, what, a, what a beaver influenced landscape looks like and, and how much our, our ecosystems have changed over time. You know, the, the, the fact that, you know, I mean, a lot of what I talk about in the book is, you know, the fact that a lot of our, you know, kind of our classic trout streams, you know, these single thread, straight, fast, rocky bottomed uh you know kind of like the kind of stream you would see in a you know in a fishing magazine uh right. you know historically those would those would have been more like swamps you know with dead trees everywhere and you know and kind of water all over the place and this you know thick um sludgy bottom uh and that was thanks to beavers you know so so we've really <laughs> lost touch i think with what what our our aquatic habitats should look like uh right. or you know what they did look like when we had right. beavers in the when they're supporting a healthy diversity of species yeah yeah exactly but you know but to your point i think that we're we are we're regaining that understanding and, and recognizing that these are hugely important animals uh you know i mean of course they they create these this and these amazing habitats for salmon and moose and ducks and frogs and you know i mean name it name a species and it you know it does well around beavers but they're also really important for us too right i mean you know we know that the, the world is getting hotter and drier because of climate change and you know beavers are creating these wonderful little reservoirs of water up in the high country uh, yeah. that you know that uh, that keep our, our landscapes hydrated you know they're they're slowing down the spread of, of wildfire by you know creating these kind of 
wetland fire breaks. They're filtering out pollution by, you know, slowing the water down and letting, uh, you know, nitrogen and phosphorus and other, you know, heavy metals uh, sort of settle out of the water column. You know, they're they're providing all of these incredible services uh, that we're that we're really beginning to understand pretty well. Uh, so I do think there's this kind of fantastic beaver movement uh, afoot, uh, you know, especially in the American West, but, you know, there are people in Maryland where you are who are doing really great beaver work as well. Uh, it's really, uh, you know, pretty national and even international. There's, a, you know, a really strong beaver restoration movement in, in Europe as well. So, you know, I do think that beavers in some ways are, you know, one of our great conservation success stories.